Well, this episode of What's Going On With Shipping surfs up with the launch of the littoral combat ship Cleveland. I am your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to this episode. So a video has been making the rounds by Tristan Heinkamper showing the launch of littoral combat ship Cleveland, the 16th of the Freedom Class LCS vessels launched up in Marionette, Wisconsin. The launches of the previous 15 littoral combat ships up in Marionette are always a big event because it features a sideways launch, something you don't see too much these days. But during this launch, things go astray. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the video and then we're going to break it down and talk about what may have happened here and why this occurred. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go to the launch of the littoral combat ship Cleveland. That was not the way the launch was supposed to go. In the previous 15 launches of littoral combat ships, typically what you would see is the tugboat, in this case right here, which is hooked with a tow line to the bow of the vessel, would be in a position somewhere akin to here, up along the bow of the vessel. Instead, it is right in the path of where you're going to launch the vessel. Not exactly sure why that happened but that is what occurs. Now, littoral combat ships up in Wisconsin are launched. The ships are built in these frames, and then the frames are actually attached to the vessel. And so the vessel is going to basically, they break away the launch ways and the ship will slide into the water with these fittings on it. The vessel is then towed to a dry dock. The dry dock is, is actually raised up in this case. And then th these are removed and the ship can be floated free. And again, this has happened quite a lot. The Freedom Class, littoral combat ship has been one of the two types of littoral combat ships that probably has the most troubled history. 16 of these things, Cleveland is the last one being built. However, there's plans to decommission 10 of the 16. Understand these ships just started entering service back in the uh, about 2008 and now they're already being decommissioned. One of the big problems had to do with the drive of the vessel, what was called the combining gear that allowed the vessel to achieve their high speed over 40 knots. This is the gear that merged together the diesel and gas turbines. There were failures in them, which kept the ships at below 16 knots. And overall, the vessel has been plagued with a lot of problems. Initially, these vessels were supposed to be modular, being able to be fitted with three different types of modules, anti-surface, anti-mine, and anti-submarine. The anti-submarine module has never come to fruition. Uh, matter of fact, it's been canceled. The anti-mine is still in development, and the only module that has worked on these vessels is the anti-surface module. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video here and break it down. So again, this tugboat is in an improper position. I should also note something too. This is not the U.S. Navy. Uh, Cleveland is not a commissioned vessel. It is not USS Cleveland at this point. The vessel is still owned by Lockheed Martin and the Marionette Shipyard. It is not in the possession of the U.S. Navy. This is completely the shipyard doing the launching. And again, it's a question here. Did they launch the ship before the signal was given? Or is this tug in an improper position? One of the things that strikes me right off the bat is this tug is hooked on. You can see the line here. You'll also see a big, huge stern weight coming out. The ship is powering. It's, it's digging in. Uh, a lot of power coming in. You can see the smoke coming off the diesel here. It is trying to drive itself, and I don't understand why, because it, it usually, again, is floating off in the position here off the bow well out of the way when the ship launches. If you look at the previous 15 launches, and I can pull them all up for you to look at, that's what you would see. Well, you see the stern digging in, you see it digging power, you see this, and you're gonna watch actually it hit the stern and the bow come up on the vessel. So you can see it's actually struck. You see the bow kicks up right there. And that's a huge bow wave. Let me be clear. Uh, that wave goes almost over the mast of the tugboat. Uh, according to reports uh, that the Cleveland did suffer some damage where it hit the stern of the tug, but because of the rolling motion where it hit was pretty high up, probably somewhere almost along the, the main deck line up here near the gunnel where it hit. This video has it from several different angles here, as I'll show you. 
So one of the things you can notice in this video right here, and I'll have the full video uh, without me talking in the show notes for you, you'll see the crew members running very fast to get out of the way because the ship is bearing down on them. Well, it's a lot of water. I got thrown on that tug. Interesting to note that uh, the Twitter page for Lockheed Martin, which usually has all these launches on it, has a very abbreviated version of this launch. This launch took place just this past Saturday. Uh, so that would have been uh, a April uh, uh, 15th. Uh, again, the very last one being launched in this way from the side propulsion. You'll see right here the ramps that it's on, the slides that it's on. The vessel is built that way. And it's built at a level, basically level, but again, it's slid down here. You'll see the jet drives, the twin jet drives. That's what drives the vessel. And then all of these braces are attached to the vessel. The reason you do a side launch like this is because of the width of the river here. You would typically launch vessels either stern first and it would slide down that way and you actually don't see that actually too much anymore the way you tend to build vessels now in, are in docks and just flood them down but you do the side launch because the river is either not wide enough or there's not enough deep water for it and you don't want the vessel crashing into the other bank uh, these are obviously big events well attended especially this being the last sideways launch up at the facility And here's another image where you really see the tug get a good hit right there. Again, usually that tug would be off in this position with a line attached to the bow. So I'm really at a loss to understand why that tug was in it. The issue here, was there a miscommunication? Uh, did they launch it early? Was the tug not in the right position? Again, we don't know these, these issues, but this is not, let's be clear again, not a Navy issue. Uh, this is an issue with the shipyard and the tug. Uh, the Navy has very little to do with the launching, even though they'll be there, they'll be prospective commanding officers. The ship has to undergo uh, fitting out, it has to undergo a sea trial, and it's after that it passes a series of inspections will the shipyard deliver it to the Navy, and then Cleveland will become USS Cleveland at that point. And again, littoral combat ships have had a very checkered career in the United States Navy. Two different classes, the Freedom and the Independence. You would know the Independence if you saw it, the catamaran-shaped hull. Uh, all of them have suffered problems. Independence had hull cracks. Uh, the Freedom had their combining gear. So I hope this video puts it into a little bit more context, uh, this launch, and gives you a little bit of a better explanation for what happened. If you enjoyed today's video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below, or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber to the page. Until our next video, this is Sal, signing off.